Good afternoon. My name is Rich Nass, and I am here for this week's installment of Five Minutes With. And this week we have a special guest star. We have Lisa Sue, the president of, and CEO of AMD. Hello, Lisa. How are you? Hi, Rich. It's nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Good, good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, so let's get into the questions. Um, okay, first question. You're the CEO of a company that, for better or worse, has always been looked at as the number two player in the microprocessor world. How does that sit with you? Are you okay with that, or is, 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 is that not right? You know, Rich, I would say um, AMD is an amazing company. You know, we have a, a rich 45-year history of, um, of innovation and always being at the leading edge. Um, if anything, I think our reputation is one of being, you know, call it the smaller, maybe more innovative competitor. Um, you know, certainly as we were bringing out the first gigahertz processor and, you know, moving into 64-bit x86. So, you know, very proud of our heritage and what we can do. Um, you know, there's no question that success for us is, uh, you know, really putting our technology into the most um, innovative products. And so that's certainly what I'm focused on, you know, over the next, you know, five years. Uh, but, um, you know, I'm very proud of the heritage of AMD and the technology and, and the people that we have. That's great. And I'm really happy to hear that there's a five-year plan in place. Let's talk about something that happened pretty recently. Um, you announced an ARM-based product, but um, your competitors have been doing ARM for years now. So what makes you think you can compete when your competitors have such a head start on you? Yeah, so uh, that's a great question. You know, when I think about you know, microprocessor leadership, um, there's really only a couple of companies in the world who, you know, really have um, the capability of being on the leading edge of, you know, microprocessor architectures. And, you know, I think we're one of them. Um, we've historically been an x86 company, and, you know, x86 has a large uh, TAM. You know, let's call it a, you know, 40 billion plus TAM. Um, ARM adds uh, a, um, you know, really doubles that TAM uh, to, uh, you know, over, over $90 billion in terms of available opportunity. We're not going after the entire ARM market. I mean, our new products are actually focused on, you know, the 64-bit portion of the ARM market. And what we're trying to do is bring ARM somewhere where it hasn't been before, you know, really trying to get x86 class performance um, in, in ARM microarchitecture to, uh, to expand the market. So we're not going after, let's call it, today's ARM market. We're really going after tomorrow's ARM market. That's a pretty interesting philosophy. It seems as if most of the conversations I have with folks are M0, M4, um, but there is not a lot of talk at 64-bit ARM. Was that a very conscious decision for that reason, because it's not a crowded space? Yes, yes, absolutely, Rich. I mean, I think our view of the world is, you know, we, we have to, you know, really intersect what are the most important, um, you know, trends um, over uh, the next uh, couple of years. You know, 64-bit ARM, I think, is attractive uh, because ARM is a, a open architecture. It's a large market. Um, once you invest in the ARM ecosystem, you know, that investment carries forward. Um, you know, I think we believe that a high-performance 64-bit offering um, will add value. Um, that's not to say that we're not very proud of the x86 capability. You know, we just see it as an opportunity to address a larger set of markets, you know, including uh, you know, sort of server um, as well as um, some of the high-performance embedded markets. Absolutely. That's great. Okay. Now I'd like to go in a completely different direction. In a lot of these interviews, we talk about um, the education process, kids coming out of college and, and that kind of thing. Um, but what I'd like to ask you, you're the HR person at AMD, and you have this candidate in there for a very important engineering job. What is the one question you will ask this candidate to find out if he's really got what it takes uh, to work at AMD? <laughs> well, I think the, um, the one thing I would say is, you know, we want people at AMD who want to change the world. So it is really, you know, do you want to change the world and do you believe that semiconductors can do it? Um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a passionate semiconductor fan, as I, as I know uh, you are, Rich, and, you know, there's been a lot said about how much innovation is left in this in industry. And, uh, you know, is it a manufacturing you know, only industry, or is there still still a lot of innovation? Um, I truly believe that you know the most interesting semiconductor innovation is going to happen over the next five to ten years, and um, that's going to come from design, that's going to come from um, system integration, that's going to come from software and and solutions. And so, 
you know, having uh, candidates that, you know, really thrive on being on that leading edge and, you know, wanting to build products that, uh, you know, go into, you know, all of these connected devices um, that will uh, be in place. I think that those are the types of people that we're looking for at AMD. That's great. Okay, one more question, and I hope you're okay with this. I have to ask. You're a woman in what, a, what many perceive to be a man's world. Does that put you at a disadvantage? Does it make a difference? So, um, so Rich, I get asked that question a lot. You know, I'll tell you, um, honestly, it's not something that I think about a lot. Um, I will say I don't think it's a disadvantage. I think one of the, the great things about engineering is engin engineering is, is very, um, I would say it's very much of what you deliver and the results that you deliver. So you know, either the product works or it doesn't work. Um, you know, either you have um, you know, satisfied the customer or you haven't. And I think those are great traits uh, for, you know, whether you're talking about, you know, male leaders or female leaders, I think the focus is how do you get results in your business and how do you get results out of a team and, and how do you, you know, build, um, you know, great products. So um, I do think that, um, you know, there should be, um, you know, more gender diversity, um, you know, in the, um, in the engineering profession, but I certainly view it as a, a privilege to, uh, you know, to be where I am. And, uh, you know, very much one of those areas where uh, it's, um, it's fun to be able to do good things, and, and that's, uh, that's what we're able to do in, in these, you know, really technology-rich uh, professions. Well, you and I have known each other a long time, and I have no doubt that you will be taking AMD on that five-year path that you have set forth. Hey, thank you so much, Rich. Appreciate uh, the time and uh, spending time with, uh, with you. My pleasure. That was Lisa Sue, President and CEO of AMD.